Assalamu alaikum, Malcolm Talib Asami here, here to talk to you about Class A power amplifiers. So let's get to it. So firstly, I'm going to talk about what is a power amplifier and why we actually need it. So a power amplifier is an electronic amplifier, hence its name, designed to increase the magnitude of power of a given input signal. The input signal's power should be high enough to drive the output device. Usually power amplifiers are the final stage in any audio process before the audio signal is sent to the speaker. Here I would like to demonstrate why we actually need a power amplifier. By drawing an audio playback process a block diagram, which is a simplified version of it, just mainly for the purpose to show why we actually need a power amplifier. So here we, we have a mic, and this mic signal goes into what we call a voltage amplifier. So this voltage amplifier can be a single stage or multi-stage single uh, uh, voltage amplifier, as much as uh, it depends on the system. But uh, mainly, this, this signal is in millivolts or microvolts. And the output signal here is in volts. So as I mentioned before, the power amplifier is the final stage. So here you have a power amplifier. And here we have our, um, our output device, which is um, a speaker. So one might argue why don't we just amplify um, amplify this voltage using another voltage amplifier and why do we actually use it, a power amplifier. So as we studied in previous courses, voltage amplifiers have high uh, output impedance. So this high output impedance cannot, cannot drive the output device, given that the output device has a low impedance. This this low impedance can range between uh, 4 ohms to 8 ohms, depending on the quality and depending on the price that uh, you buy it for. So uh, as I said, it, the voltage amplifier has very high impedance, so this high impedance cannot drive this low impedance load, given that it has no current amplification. So the voltage amplifier has no current amplification. Uh, however, you have your power amplifier, which are designed to have actually low impedance, and they are biased to obtain maximum voltage swing. And that, in short, that can drive um, the output device that we have here, given that the current coming out of the power amplifier is enough to, to so let's say turn on the speaker and the speaker. secondly I'm going to talk about class A power amplifier variations and characteristics so starting off by a single ended uh, a class A power amplifier uh, this variation is commonly known as a common emitter amplifier uh, with multiple biases by an RC uh, by an RC on the base but what I want to clarify here is that the maximum efficiency for this for the single ended class A power amplifier is 25% and we will get to how this 25% is uh, is there and uh, why we can't ideally get it more than 25%. Secondly, we have a transformer coupled uh, class A power amplifier which is basically removing the RC the collector resistor and uh, replacing it by a transformer. So uh, just to make the picture clear, I'm going to roughly draw uh, this uh, circuit. Here we have our PGT. Yeah, this, this is just a PGT. And here we have RE and our bypass capacitor connected to ground. This is biased by R1 and R2 with capacitor C1 here. 
C1. V input right here, VCC. Here we have our primary winding for and for the transformer and our secondary winding right here connected with R L. Here's our our load. So basically, uh, this transform coupled uh, uh, this sorry this transform coupled uh, configuration allows uh, allows impedance matching. So maximum power can be transferred to the load due to the effective value of the load R L when referred to the primary winding. So R L here when referred to the primary winding is obviously this is uh, N, N1, N2 is referred to as N squared times RL so this creates an actual uh, uh, impedance matching between between the transistor and, uh, and the load given maximum power dissipation to the load Second, I'm going to be like I'm going to like to talk about the characteristics of a class A power amplifier. First, a class A power amplifier has a simpler design than other power amplifier classes to its single transistor design. The main characteristic is that the transistor in the class A power amplifier uh, is biased to conduct throughout the whole duty cycle. Um, let's imagine this right here. Given that I'm going to draw the collector current. The waveform here we have the Q set point chosen ICQ DC analysis form and here we have the alternating uh, uh, conducting um, uh, collector current and as we can see here that if we calculate the conduction angle of this waveform, we get a 360 degrees conduction angle for class A power amplifier. Which brings me to, the, to my next point, which is given that this, this transistor is on all the time, this causes a high heat dissipation inside uh, this amplifier. <coughs> Lastly, because the transistor does not transition between on and off states, this, this prevents crossover distortion in a class A power amplifier, which is a huge advantage. So as I previously mentioned, I'm going to be talking about the efficiency of a class A power amplifier and why it is ideally 25%. But before getting into uh, why the efficiency is on 25% maximum, we need to understand uh, this graph right here. So this graph right here represents the characteristics, uh, the output characteristics of, uh, of any transistor. And what we have here is our Q point. So ideally, we want our PGT to operate at this Q point for, uh, for obviously amplification. So uh, what what I want to do right here is I want to find expressions for A and expressions for B. Okay, related obviously to this graph. Okay, so ultimately I can find this Q point right here. And uh, it's good to, to see here that Q, this Q point is midway between the current IC and it's midway between VCE. So let's just get into it. Uh, firstly, what I want to do is to derive uh, an equation for the output that comes out of this transistor. Uh, as previously taught in different courses, we can perform DC analysis on this PGT. By performing DC analysis, we uh, any capacitors in the circuit become an open circuit. Uh, so here we are getting rid of this V input. Here, sorry, I forgot to label them. Here we have RB. We have RC and here we have VCC and um, 
obviously here we have the current I collector. So by performing DC analysis on this on this PGT uh, by taking KVL at the output, Y would have uh, the VCC minus uh, the voltage on this resistor RC, which is RC times IC minus obviously the voltage between the collector and the emitter. which equals to zero. So here I have derived an equation that relates the output of this PGT amplifier. So to find to find these two points, A and B, we, uh, we can see that if to find A, I need to uh, uh, calculate the IC when PCE equals to zero. And uh, similarly, for, for point B, I need to calculate VCE when IC equal to zero. So here, I would like to start with uh, with this point B. So point B is when IC equal to zero. If I substitute IC equal zero here, I would have VCE equal VCC, which is the maximum VCE ideally that I can get. This is obviously when I see equal to zero. And similarly I can find that I see max by substituting VCE here into uh, into zero and uh, what I get is that I C equals VCC over RC. This is obviously when VCE equals to zero. So here, ultimately, I have I have derived two equations uh, for uh, that relate point A and point B. So point point B is VCC and zero, and point A is VCC over RC and uh, sorry, zero and VCC over RC. So what we want to find here, as I said, is this Q point. So this is our main target right here. This Q cent point, which which is the point that it operates on. We can assume here that this Q point has a VCE Q. And an ICQ. So, and we can see that by our assumption is that ICQ is midway between this line and VCEQ is also mid midway between these two points. So what we can here, what we can do here is derive actually equations for VCEQ and ICQ. So firstly, I'm going to start with VCEQ. It is pretty obvious that uh, the uh, the point right here is midway between zero and VCC. So we have VCC minus zero divided by two, which gives you VCC over two, and ICQ is I max, which we IC max, which we found here minus zero divided by two, which gives us VCC minus obviously zero over RC multiplied by two, because you divide this whole sum by two. So now we have differentiated uh, uh, or found uh, expressions for VCQ and ICQ. So what we want to understand here is why we did this. So basically we did this just to uh, figure out what is the efficiency of this class A power amplifier. So uh, efficiency is represented as ultimately the, 
the power of the output. Sorry about that. Over the power of the input multiplied by a hundred multiplied by a hundred percent. So what we understand here is that the efficiency is how much power I'm getting compared to the power I am inputting from the DC power supply. So whatever whatever power I get at the output compared to how much power I draw from this DC power supply. So to calculate uh, the P output of this PGT, we can relate to uh, equations we previously studied about power and that power can be can be related by v squared over rl in a in the in a general representation of power voltage is always taken into rms value which can be easily represented by by the voltage over root 2 over RL here all squared this is just a general representation of, uh, of the power it needs to be in RMS values so obviously uh, we are trying to calculate the power of the output so we need to take the voltage of the output and um, as uh, sorry, this is uh, this is not RL. This is RC because we are trying to calculate the power of the output. So the power of the output is is the the output voltage uh, divided by RC. So, but again, the output voltage has a full swing, which means that it uh, its its peak value is uh, it's calculated from peak to peak so this is only the peak value so if i want to calculate the, the value of the voltage from peak to peak i would need to represent it from in a peak to peak value so so obviously v peak to peak of the output divided by two And you have the root 2 right here. This is all squared divided by RC. So here our V peak to peak is at obviously full swing. So what we know is that it's only the voltage peak to peak of the output. So the maximum uh, v output right here is only uh, VCE max. So what we have here is that this voltage peak to peak is equivalent to VCE max, which is which we can relate to by VCC. So our final expression of this P output is when we squared two and when you square root two you would have four times two you would have eight right here and obviously this is all squared so now we have found the first the first part of our efficiency equation by finding the power out the output again we now we need to find the power at the input so the power at the input is much uh, is much easier than uh, the power at the output. It is only uh, obviously uh, VCC multiplied by the current ICQ at operating point. So uh, here we know that ICQ is VCC over 2RL, and we have another VCC from up the power equation so we end up with vcc squared over 2 r l so by dividing by dividing these two formulas by each other we get we get 2 
over 8, which translates to 1 over 4, or 25%. efficiency rate. Obviously this is only in ideal in ideal circumstances because here we assume that the maximum VCE uh, voltage is also the power supplied by our DC power supply uh, VCC. So uh, uh, you might want to ask yourself what does it mean by 25% uh, efficiency? It means that if we have if we have a power coming from the DC supply of 5 watts, so the power we're getting is basically only 1 watt at the output. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a Class A power amplifier. So one of its main advantages is that there is no crossover, crossover distortion, mainly because the device, which is the transistor, it conducts for the entire cycle of the input signal, which means that it has a, a conduction angle of 360 degrees. So another advantage is that the single-ended uh, configuration, which was explained uh, previously, can be easily and practically realized. That means it is, uh, it is simple to build and uh, does not require much components. So uh, one of the disadvantages is that is due to the large power supply and the transistor being on all the time, as we said previously, that the active device conducts for the entire cycle of the input signal. So this might require this class A power amplifier to be uh, to be to be synced with something called a heatsink. So a heatsink is uh, uh, is a device that provides cooling for uh, for that amplifier. So the components in it, which is the transistor and the capacitors, do not uh, heat out. So that adding this heatsink to um, to the power amplifier uh, means that uh, it can increase its size first and in also increases its price. So it, it usually becomes very expensive to, to buy a Class A power amplifier just because it, heat, it needs a heat sink. And as the last disadvantage as previously demonstrated by uh, in a Class A power amplifier is that it has poor efficiency, which constrains its purposes to only amplify low signals. <clears throat> this is obviously the end of uh, this video. Uh, thank you.